now to discuss the Anambra election. And all that played out in it is the convener of the Situation Room, Ene Obi. Ene Obi, good to have you on This Day Live, the Sunday talk show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you very much indeed. Well, I mean, you've been following the situation. You are on the ground there. Um, uh, yesterday, I, you, you, you offered a preliminary report. Uh, earlier today, you also offered another report. Now, we've been given uh, reports, results, from about all the uh, 21 local government areas. Uh, would you like to uh, talk to us about what you think are the key issues in this election? and what you should watch out for going forward, now that all the 21 local governments have been announced. Okay, I, I, I think uh, just listening to you too, and being on ground here, it makes you, I want to look at some key areas. One is to look at INEC preparedness before the election. We followed up for a very long time to monitor, you know, because of the CVR, the continuous voter registration that was done, and because of the constitutional requirements, they had to stop it 60 days to the election, that they were able to do. Uh, and um, getting the voters card ready, you know, the PVC became a problem. It was a problem because that was received about uh, four days before the election, just barely five days before the election, that it was delivered at the state level. The complaints were, were that, you know, the printing, you know, of the uh, PVC was a, a big issue. And for us, knowing that we needed to get ready for the elections, that shouldn't have happened. So we, we saw a bit of a problem from that environment. But at the end of the day, because of the kind of crisis leading to the election, the scare, you know, the fear, the, the bloodletting that uh, characterized the earlier, you know, uh, period, it, it took a long time for even the, those who were uh, the candidates to start campaigning. I remember being on ground four, four you know, uh, weeks ago. It was a lot of tension packed. And so we, there were issues. But the election, you know, it started yesterday for, for civil society situation room. We were able to, we did a lot of adverts, we did a lot of mobilization, even come, being on ground here gave us more zeal, you know, to do a lot, a lot of uh, mobilization, appealing to uh, Indian Ambra to make sure that they come out and vote. Because the issue is, if you sit at home, even if you have a lot of people from, from a particular polling booth, or a polling unit, or you know, the local government that has huge population. If 1,000 people come out to vote, they will count 1,000, you know, INEC will count 1,000. So I think one of the biggest things that happened was the, was the beavers, a number of it failed. It failed, and that really, it hurt a lot of us because of the mobilization that we did. The voter turnout was not so much because again, because of what happened before the elections, Anambra already has the lowest voter apathy. And then we come into the mobilization and some of the beavers had problems. Earlier in the day yesterday, you know, the turnout was a bit low, but as the days were wearing and they knew that this thing was happening, that happened. And if you look at the security, we had a series of meetings. We had meeting with the, uh, with the DIG, where uh, Frank Mba called us to a meeting. The PRO was on ground here, you know, and a lot of top police officers, you know, officials that were on ground, and the security officers from civil defense, from the army, they were on ground and they assured us that they were ready. And we could see that they were ready, you know. And uh, I can tell you that the, the environment was calm, was peaceful, were able to go out, no harassment, there were foreign observers on ground as well. I think the hitch was the was beavers, you know, not working, you know, very well, some of, in some centers, in some police centers. And then we had reports of uh, the equipment, the equipment, the voters, the materials being snatched in certain places. Of course, where INEC has done a lot of things, but the beavers was the major issue. But again, uh, what do you do when you have ad hoc staff, you know, late um, arrival of materials and also the INEC officials, uh, transportation issues, we understand the logistic issues. Because some people, even as we are here, 
um, observers are moving to the field. A lot of the people that we, we paid money for transport, a number of them said they were not going. No matter what you paid them, it was not worth their lives. And so we had those issues on ground. But I want to commend the security forces in majority of the pools that we went, that they kept to their words. They were friendly, they were civil, you know. So there's so many things that happened. But I think, you know, uh, the color code that was also used, you know, for the different local governments was another area. So even if you steal from one local government, you can't, if you take voters registration, you can't go to another local government. I think they tried to block a lot of, uh, a lot of environment. We hope that they, 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 there will be improvement, you know, as we go forward. We also saw the issue of voter, you know, voter, uh, uh, we saw some level of corruption, voter buying, uh, you know, uh, vote buying. Um, but we also witnessed a place, a particular place that uh, they drove the people with the money, that they don't want their money. As much as 5,000 Naira was going to go to people and they rejected it and they kicked them out. So we, we really congratulate uh, and Amberians for some of the things that we were able to do. I saw very old women and old men coming out and determined to, to, to vote. We also saw places where the people were prepared to defend their vote and ask that INEC official, officials will not leave there until they had counted the vote. And the participation, the energy that they brought about. You know, I think it, it's really exciting. We didn't record any violence for those who went out, you know, uh, and came in. So, we really want to commend uh, the security system, but again, we always we also told them that we heard of some of the you know allowances not being paid to some officers and so on and so forth. What we are doing now is lessons for the future. We are learning so that any other one that is coming, eyes hands will be on deck. The lessons we take from this election will be put down. But INEC needs to take decision on what to do. With the voting, with the, the polling units that had no, um, you know, that had no uh, uh, voting, that voting was not conducted at all. INEC officials did not, you know, uh, arrive. But this is a peculiar um, a election, and I hope that we'll be able to uh, tidy up things for the next election. With the uh, collection of results and the announcement of results from the 21 uh, local government areas, and the reported glitches in some of those uh, local government areas, registration areas, polling units, in some of the areas that uh, we had already identified. What do you think is likely to happen going forward? Do you think that at some point tonight we're likely to have INEC announcing uh, the winner of the election, or we may be told that there will be supplementary elections uh, just to address some of the issues raised uh, from some of the uh, local government areas reporting. Okay, Ruben, I think uh, it behoves on NINEC to look at the report that has come in and uh, to see what exactly they are going to be looking at. And so if it comes to the, to the decision, if you are in a local government, where half of the local government or two thirds of the local government have done, um, you know, uh, have, be, have voted, and they look at the population of those who have not voted. Will it create changes if that is not announced? So INEC will have to take decisions, and they have their guidelines, they have regulations, they have a lot of things that they can do that can make election, you know, uh, may, can reassure people that their votes will count, that they, and, and that is very, very essential. By midnight yesterday, we, have, we already had results on the INEC portal, more than 4,000 polling units, you know, had uploaded their results. And I think that is the beauty, beauty of the electronic transmission that is going on, you know, and I th if we can bring that forward, there is a lot that will be done, there is a lot that is going on, there is a lot of lessons that we have learned from here, and this is seeking for, you know, we're putting, um, We'll be putting our energy in the, in the places where they belong. Um, whether they are going to announce will also be from the criteria. It depends on the voting population. It depends also on the people that are uh, going to get, uh, be accredited, that are likely to be accredited. So they, they will look at the population. There are rules for which you can declare a winner. 
So they may declare the winner, but again, they have the results. Over about a thousand, you know, um, pulling units had issues or so, one thing or the other, because there is more than 5,000 pulling units. But again, you know, beavers had problem, about 400 be, uh, uh, units had issues. One of the things that we also uh, were confronted with was each time that we escalated, because we had hotlines, you know, in the situation room. Those who were reporting, you know, who told us there were problems in certain places, and even observers that went out, once they reported, we escalated. And INEC was able to send their technical officers, though there were not many on ground, which led to people not casting their votes on time. But they were responding. I take it one of the gubernatorial candidates told us that he had not voted, he was in, a, in, in the, in the uh, environment for more than, pulling unit for more than uh, three hours. As at that time, but he also acknowledged that they had now sent a technical person on ground. And a few hours later, about an hour later, he had voted. And so this is commendable for the reactions, the technical, despite the logistics that confronted INEC. What we didn't like was, uh, why should the beavers have problem? But this is the first election that they are deploring, you know, uh, the beavers on a, on, a, on a large scale. Though they had a by-election for Isoko, you know, that was a small one, so there wasn't uh, uh, problems and we're looking forward to this. But this, I hope the lessons will be learned because if you have to uh, pull it down on a national scale, you need to be ready. And uh, that readiness will hold INEC accountable for that. There were issues between the state and the national INEC, I would say, between the, from the national level, because of transportation of a lot of things, that synergy needs to be built so that we can have more seamless, uh, you know, uh, uh, vote restoration of uh, people respecting their constitutional rights. And we hope that um, whatever, what I always say is that one person will be declared winner. And so, we need to cast our votes. Those who didn't vote, they, they are not part of the choices. Whoever that a few people vote, you have to live with it for the next four years. And that's why we ask people to come out and vote. We hope that uh, we can make a difference with this. Well, and I, I'm surprised since we started this conversation, you've used the phrase lessons. And you've talked about synergy between INEC at the state level and the federal level. You've talked about BVAS and the attempt by INEC to experiment with that uh, system. Uh, but could you be more specific in terms of lessons? Because there are also other issues. There were also other sources of anxiety, particularly with regard to security, voter turnout. What specifically have we learned that could be uh, useful as guide as we move towards the 2023 general elections? We are asking that the, the beavers, there is no excuse why the beavers should not function. But again, we say this is a peculiar election. And if you are going to go on a national scale, we cannot afford the machines to fail. What that means, uh, because we took INEC on and they explained to us that they had a lot of uh, technical people around whom they have trained to hover around. But uh, because of the failure of many of the uh, ad hoc staff turning around, they had to deploy them to man stations, which they were not meant for. And so the beavers cannot afford to fail. When you are doing electronic uh, transmi uh, uh, accreditation and also you know, transmission, you cannot afford to fail. So we are asking them, but they showed the readiness you know, to do certain things, you know, to move immediately, and we hope that uh, the lessons they get from here you know, will, will be, you know, will be taken to the next level. We were also told that the beavers, you know, some of them, the new ones came and they were not quite ready with it and they deployed to the states. Then the new ad hoc staff who just came on board, which is no fault of theirs, were deployed to the field. Some of them had uh, difficulty in operating the machines. You can also not blame that because of the peculiarity of this situation you have trained people, you, have, you are ready for them, they are mobilized, they are about going to the field. And people massively, they say they are not going to the field. How do you judge that? You can't use that to judge them. But we had meetings with the, with the security, we had meetings with the DIG, 
And that meeting, the police reassured us. They gave us all the numbers to call when there is an infraction. And so we were really, you know, there was a whole network for, from INEC to the police and then to the citizens. And then media. There was also a meeting with the media. And I really want to commend the media for their, for their courage of conviction, for the courage of being in the forefront, for coming out, you know, you needed to see the place with the, the beehive of, a, of a journalists from all over the media houses. And I want to commend them. But I can tell you that if you are on ground here, if you were on ground a month ago, hardly would you want to come to Anambra State. And then the, uh, a lot of fake news out there. It doesn't look like this is the Anambra that you are sitting now that somebody is talking about. And a lot of, it, many people thought, you know, you are just, uh, you have another life if you are coming to Anambra State. It wasn't like that yesterday. Everywhere was calm. People went about their normal duties. So an election held and was very peaceful, apart from some of the disturbances that we had. Another unique way, unique uh, environment was a guideline of INEC asking that people with disabilities should be given priority. Priority was given to pregnant women. Priority was given to the elderly. And those rules were quite observed. And we hope that they will continue. But we need more, you know, um, like um, having straight lines and having let people keep distancing. There wasn't much of the, the COVID-19 protocols as everybody was anxious, you know, trying to vote. If you can observe, learn from COVID-19 protocol and you keep that distance, it's going to be very difficult for somebody to squeeze money into your hand. And so when we understand those rules, I think vote buying is going to be harder. Harder and harder as we go ahead. But we have, you know, it's been less in the collaboration between all parties, the openness and transparency between all parties, both the non state actors and non state actors. I will say that it went very well. Well, Anna, you've commended the security agencies, uh, and you've talked about, you know, the security situation, uh, you know, not being a problem. But yes, a few days ago, I was still in uh, Oka in Anambra State before I came back to uh, Lagos. But you, you, you are commending the state, the Nigerian state. How about uh, the indigenous peoples of Biafra that spoke through a uh, person, Emma Powerful, and said, look, they had lifted the seat at home uh, order and that the election should go ahead and that, uh, you know, people should feel free to exercise their franchise, their interest not being in disrupting the electoral process. Do you want to comment on that? I want to commend them because when I came down, when I came to Anambra four weeks ago, we declared a situation room, we asked the federal government to engage, you know, IPOP. We are also told on ground that there are more groups than IPOP. When you have citizens that are aggrieved, you need to speak with them. When you have, um, you know, the government, state governments are debating, they are, con they, they are having conversations with bandits. They are having conversations with Boko Haram. Some of them, they have, uh, you know, been able to talk to them. You know, they have repented. You have even given them, you have forgiven them and even rehabilitated them. What are you doing? IPOP are people who are agreed. They are saying something. They are your citizens. Have you been able to speak to them? Why would you not speak to them? At the end of any conflict, dialogue is what solves the problem. So we encourage the federal government, we encourage the state government to talk to those who are aggrieved. Because you should not uh, operate with IPOM as if they are faceless. They argued, you have, uh, for example, you have Kanu that is in detention. Those who are controlling, is it Boko Haram? Is it the bandits? Who have you sent to jail? Which one of them have you sent to jail? So when you maintain that double edge, you make people angry. I want to commend them because when we came on ground, there was a lot of fear with the people. They said, if they sit at home, they are not going to come out. So I, I, I really want to commend them for issuing that statement to say, let people go to vote. But because he came in a bit late, people were not sure whether they actually said it because there is a lot of fake news now. People were also worried whether it was IPOP that said it or it was the government propaganda and so on and so forth. And so they took their time and that's why people did not, many people did not turn out early 
But once they saw that the process was okay, and the police were not, the police uh, uh, and the security forces, they were quite civil with everyone. So a few, many people that came out, came out because they were now sure that something good can happen. But I think the turnout with this election will still be worse because those going out, a lot of people, a woman said, no, my husband stopped me from coming. He said, do you have two lives? But a lot of women still came out. Because for me, when we came out here, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago, I was telling them, I said, the women of Anambra, you need to come out because this bloodletting cannot continue. These are your children because for me as a woman, when I hear that somebody is killed, the first thing that I remember is a woman has carried pregnancy for nine months. And then when you add to how many, they say they killed 20, is in the data. It's not in the data for, for, for women. You have mugged 20 women's hearts because it's their children that you have just killed. Nine months, what does it take to raise a life? And that's why when women are not in positions of decision making, and when there are conflicts because they bear the brunt, again, you know, you just wipe out the life, the labor of women, the labor of a family just like that. And so I told them, you have to come out and stand and vote for, your, for, for the leaders that are coming out because of service delivery. You need to hold them accountable because they are about women protests. See, stands the test of time. There were women from Calabar, the women from Aba, women from, you know, Aquaibom. You know, Southeast women came together and said, this injustice cannot go on. But what we are witnessing now, here now, is the issue of injustice that is happening. So I commend them, and I commend the, 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 the people who were courage enough, the Indi Anambra that were courage enough. You know, for me, it's homecoming as well, and I'm happy to be here. And I commend IPOB, I com I ask, I'm asking the federal government to dialogue with IPOB, and I'm asking them to also dialogue with other groups that may be splinter groups. What is their concern, really? We need to look at the issues deeper. I'm asking the federal government, and I'm asking the, the, the president of Nigeria to treat all children of Nigeria as his. Because they are his children. Who else can we call our father? You are on that seat, so pay the same attention. When you are doing that, we will know that you are leading the country. We will know that you are the president of everybody, just like was promised in 2015 when the president came in. And so you need to dialogue with the parents. So I commend them, and I hope, I'm also appealing for them, this seat at home is not helping people. Because in the number, a majority of the people are traders, and they depend on daily living. When you depend on daily living, it means you have to go out. Without going out, you cannot eat. So it's impoverishing and it's destroying the economy of the Southeast. All those who are, if people from outside the Southeast are encouraging you, all of them are in their shops. They are making their money. So are you going to continue like that? Let's have a turnaround. And whoever wins this election should try to make an example of the state. One state can make a difference. One state can show the way. This is Anambra State, where you have girls coming out of Anambra that are the scientists that won world records in a little Anambra State. So our commitment is that uh, while all the stakeholders have come together to be here, it is because we want the best for Anambra. We want the best for Nigeria. And the whole world is watching Anambra because of what will come in 2023 and also the other of cycle elections. Well, and I, I know you have another engagement in a matter of minutes, but just before you go, I'd like to ask you, what's your assessment of the conduct of the political class in Nanambra? Well, if that is too broad, let's say the political parties and the candidates so far. Do you have any fears that by this time tomorrow, we'll probably have some of the uh, candidates who are trailing behind rejecting the results or there will be litigation uh, post-election or that uh, from the conduct of the politicians and the candidates so far uh, that all will be well within the Anambra. What's your take? Um, first, I want to commend the Peace Accord and INEC as well for bringing that on board because I think the people listened. And with the political parties, having an elder statesman coming to talk to you, coming to appeal to you, 
you know, I think that was remarkable. And this shows that people will listen to you if you genuinely come to talk to them. So we really commend, you know, um, General Ab Ab Abdullahi for coming all the way to Anambra State and uh, Bishop, Bishop Hassan Kuka. Abdul Salame Abu Bakr. For the work that they have done and for INEC also pulling them in. So we are excited that that happened. And we hope that uh, they will keep to their words because it's not a lot of pictures. We, we went to witness them. Kuka Foundation invited all of us to make sure that we are present to witness, witness that. One of the fun that a lot of people get to have is that uh, Anambra State, they know how to go to court. But what we were campaigning and talking about at that time, we said, look, if it is because of going to court, some of them already have their judgment, maybe in their pockets already. But all of the people that contested the election, all of them are from Anambra State. No outsider came to contest election. And so they are all your children. They are all sons and daughters, uh, sons of Anambra State because there was no daughter there. You know, maybe if there was a daughter, there would be a reshaping of the, of the, of the environment. But at the end of the day, we hope that they will keep to their, their code that they signed. And we witness their signing. So that development can come to, more development can come to Anambra State. We want to wish whoever wins well. And uh, we continue to monitor them by what they say. And we will monitor their accord. Those who will come out, we again be here to witness. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, uh, NLB. Convener Situation Room, Anambra Governorship Election 2021. Thank you very much indeed.